As you may or may not know, Stardew Valley is all about leaving behind the oppressive and stressful city life, heading off into the countryside and rebuilding that farm you inherited from your grandfather into something that would make him proud. You could do that, or exploit some weird bugs to bend the game to your will because hey, being a fantastic game doesn't mean it can't have some fun glitches. I'm D-Pad Gamer, and I'm going to show you how to break Stardew Valley on day one. Right from the get-go, there is a wonderful exploit that could be initiated upon character creation. That's the item ID exploit, an unintended mechanic that the solo developer concerned Ape is actually aware of and decided to leave in the game because it's fun, except on the Switch. It was patched on that version. While naming your character, you can put numbers with brackets around them. For example, we'll be starting off with 163 and 166, the item ID codes for the Legend Fish and the Treasure Chest items respectively. You can fit up to three different item IDs, but that might crash the game, so let's just stick to two. Once your character is named and created, the first half of the exploit is done. We'll want to head into the Salty Spittoon, but that doesn't open up until noon, so let's look at another glitch in the meantime. This one is uh, pretty straightforward. So you see, by swinging your scythe or a weapon, the character moves forward ever so slightly. As it turns out, the loading zones found at each screen transition are only activated when you move your character. Using the scythe to inch forward does not. So by getting close to a loading zone and spamming the attack button for a while, we can actually get out of bounds basically anywhere. This could be used to travel out and around the beach, allowing you to run along the waters and even do some fishing if that's what you want to do. You could also use this to visit areas normally locked off until later, like for example the railroad and the bathhouse. From here, you can take it another step further by going out of bounds on the south exit, then walking up and around to the north of the area, which will reveal a path that is normally inaccessible. Wow! What a beaut! By heading farther north through the screen transition, we find ourselves in an abandoned glitchy area. From what I understand, this was going to be some kind of mountain peak, but as of now, it's been abandoned. Just a heads up though, if you're gonna do this, uh, when you try to leave the place, you'll get stuck in place, so, uh... Whoops, let's reset. Okay, different character, same name, same setup, but this time we'll actually go into the saloon when it opens up. By heading inside, we can meet one of the town's denizens, a man named Gus. He runs the saloon, and if spoken to more than once, he greets you by name. However, by naming ourselves the item IDs, which in this case are the legend fish and the treasure chest, we get those items spawned into our inventory every time he mentions our names, so he happens to be very welcoming. And on the first day, he'll actually repeat the same line over and over and over, which allows us to spam fishy chests to our heart's content. In this case, I uh, spam left click for a carpool tunnel inducing our street, as this game doesn't seem to work with auto clicking programs, but hey, we wouldn't want to go uh, cheating now, right? I went from 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. in game, and all said and done, I was able to deposit 2,919 legend fish and the same number of treasure chests. And uh, with all that uh, tallied up at the end, it was a whopping 29 million gold just from day one alone. And something I'm just realizing now that the saloon is actually open till uh, 2 a.m., not midnight. So if you do this yourself, you could make that much more gold. Either way, this definitely counts as breaking it, but don't worry, we're going to take it a step further. Before that, though, let me share some more information about this exploit. Firstly, it's not actually limited to your character name. It can also apply to your farm name, which is mentioned once during the intro, along with your character name, which is mentioned twice. So if you don't skip the intro, you can get a couple items for free right off the bat. It can also work with purchasing animal names. However, those only work one time per animal, so you'll have to buy a bunch in a row. Though once you have a coop up and running, you can just purchase and creatively name chickens to spawn in whatever you want. Oh, and you could also uh, exploit your children, because of course you can, after you decided to have a child with your spouse, which uh, is obviously best girl Leah. You have to wait 14 days for the child to be born. That's roughly the same gestation period as a Virginia opossum, so uh, that's a fun fact for you. Uh, but then you just name your child something beautiful, and you'll receive that item whenever your spouse mentions them by name. Anyways, that's great, but with this exploit, you're limited to items only. If you want to check the list for yourself and see what you could get, I'll include it in the description. Now, I have not forgotten about the title of the video, and I tend to live up to your expectations or die trying. Like Grandpa. <laughs> okay, that's not cool. So it's important to know that as of the 1.3 update, which is what I've been playing on, you can host a farm and invite up to three friends via multiplayer for some jolly cooperation. Now, take my word, I definitely have friends. But, uh, hey, did you know that it's actually possible to host and play four-person co-op on a single account all on the same computer? It's, yeah, it's cool, right? Anyways, as it happens, the item ID exploit works on all four characters in multiplayer, so here's the setup. 
I launched StardewValley.exe four times and created and hosted a farm with one player using the name 434 and 803, the codes for Star Drop and Iridium Snake Milk. Player 2 was named for the codes for Iridium Sprinklers and Rare Seeds, which you could also uh, swap out for Ancient Seeds, either way. Player 3's name features the Mega Bomb and Warp Totem Farm codes. And Player 4's name has the codes for the Prismatic Shard and Treasure Chest items. I can't speak today, can I? And by the way, all you gotta do to connect is, rather than put an IP address, just put localhost and it'll work. As I am painstakingly one by one moving all of the clones to the saloon, it's also worth mentioning that you probably want to make a chest at the place where you spawn in after teleporting because transferring items via stacks is a bit difficult and being able to drop it all into a chest, it makes it uh, really nice. Once in the saloon, you'll find that each player can only talk with Gus one at a time, so how many items you can collect will be limited compared to single player, and time doesn't stop when you're actually talking to someone, so it really cuts down how many things you can get. Either way, player one's items, while slow to collect as you must always wait for the star drop animation, will allow you to repeatedly increase your health and stamina. Player's two items will set you up for a breezy farming situation down the road, as you'll get the best sprinklers and seeds which produce the most valuable crop. Player 3's items will help with trips into the mines, as well as clearing the farm of debris, which is a real pain early on. And finally, Player 4's items are great because the treasure chests obviously net you a bunch of gold, while the prismatic shards can be used to obtain a galaxy sword later on, after getting access to the desert, and uh, more importantly, if given as gifts, the shards are loved by all important villagers, so everyone except Haley. Using this setup, you can funnel all the resources onto player 1 and you'll have a character with a bunch of health, stamina, and easy time mining, farming, and building relationships. On day 1, with our newly acquired resources in hand, we can scythe our way out of bounds and up into the railroad area. Heading into the bathhouse, we can turn around and go out of bounds using the locker room exit. This lets us access the regenerative waters of the spa without having our clothing removed. It also has the added benefit of allowing us to use items while in here, like for example placing a fence post right about here, leaving one space between the post and the stairs. So walk back down, and you can now turn around and swim right back out. On top of looking really goofy, this glitch actually allows us to maintain the spa's health and stamina regeneration wherever we go, assuming we don't pass out or reset the game. It persists across days as sleeping does not cancel it, meaning you can use all the health and energy you want and just stay still to regenerate. From the spa, we can move up and through the changing station, which won't affect us, and go outside. Since the path of the railroad is blocked off, this is where the warp totem comes in, we could use that, or uh, that's what I thought would happen. Uh, it doesn't work. Turns out I'm actually an idiot. Uh, the issue is that the warp totem is coded so that if there's anything blocking the path to the farm, it just won't work. And, uh, the railroad being blocked off counts as that, so I've, uh, technically showed you how to break Stardew Valley on day one, but if you actually want to make use of the infinite stamina and health regeneration glitch, you'll have to wait until the third day of the first summer because that's when the railroad area opens up normally. Anyways, if you did this multiplayer method, once you're done with the initial setup, you're free to open the farm as a single player game, visit Robin, and tell her to demolish the extra cabins if they're just taking up space. As for the infinite stamina and health regeneration glitch on a uh, character that actually has a spot open, I think I'm going to take my horse to the old town bath and I'm going to glitch till I can't no more. I'm going to take my horse to the old town bath and I'm going to glitch till I can't no more. Nah.